Love Jesus, my soul. Love Jesus, my soul. Love Jesus, bless his name. My soul, love Jesus, my soul, love Jesus, my soul, love Jesus, bless his name, he's a wonder. In my soul, he's a wonder. In my soul, he's a wonder. In my soul, bless his name. He's a wonder. In my soul, he's a wonder. In my soul. He's a wonder in my soul. Bless his name. Yes. 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 Lord, we thank you. We thank you, O oh God. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your goodness. God, you've been so good. You've been so kind to us, Lord. For it was you that woke us up this morning. You started us on our way. You kept us throughout the day, Lord. Some of us were on the highways. and Others, Lord, just in this town and city. God, you kept us, O oh God, while we were driving. You kept the drunk drivers away from us, those that were distracted. I want to thank you, God. I want to thank you for your tender mercies. I want to thank you for family members. I want to thank you for the church family. Oh, God, we praise your name. We magnify you where you deserve the glory. You deserve the praises. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes to your way. Yes to your will. Oh, God, be in our midst in a mighty way here. Let your glory fill this house. Let your presence be in this place in a mighty way. For where you are, there is liberty. Where you are, there is healing. There is deliverance. There is salvation. Oh, God, I want to thank you for your presence. Hallelujah. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, God, for all you've done. Never would have made it without you, Lord. I'm here today. All because of you. And so, God, we thank you. We thank you now. Thank you for this time of prayer. Thank you for the time, oh God, that the saints can come together. Thank you for these young people who are coming to church for Bible study. Lord, touch every one of them. Touch their hearts and minds. Oh, Jesus, reveal yourself in your own way to them, God. I pray that every one of them be saved. I pray that every one of them be delivered. Yes, Lord. Help us, God. Help us here, Lord. Lord, give us a ministry and the anointed. Lord, how to deal with children. Yes, Lord. Not only children, Lord. But I pray for men, folks. I pray for the anointed to be a fisherman of men. Oh, God, let it be so that men are saved. And if the men would come, Lord, the wives would follow them. The children would come likewise. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Help us here, God. For we want to go higher, Lord. We want to go to another the level. Oh God, I want to know you better. 
Yes, I do, Lord. I want a better relationship with you. I want a greater anointing. Oh, God, I'm seeking you. I'm seeking your face now. I seek your will, Lord. Show me, Lord, what I need to do. Guide my footsteps. Guide me, oh, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We look to you, God. You are my helper. You are my deliverer. You are my everything. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, I pray for healing today. Those that are sick, God, lay your hands on them now. Your hands of deliverance. I want to thank you, Lord, for letting Sister Ruth Henry go home. Oh, God. Continue to strengthen her. Lord, continue to heal. Make a whole, oh, God. Make a whole, Lord. Hallelujah. We pray for Sister Singleton. Help her now, Lord. You know the things, oh, God, that she's been praying for. Let healing take place. Heal it for a husband. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, there are others who have asked for prayer. I don't even remember right now, but you know who they are. I pray that you lay your hands on them, your hands of deliverance, your hands to heal. Heal the minds. Lord, heal the minds. Heal our emotional pain. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody's hurting right now. Somebody's disturbed right now. And the devil is telling them he's going to take their minds. But the devil is a lie. Oh, God, bind him. Bind him, Lord. All of his works. Tell out every plan. He has brought against your people. Hallelujah. We have victory in you. Victory in you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for victory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for our healing. Lord, I thank you for healing the minds of the people and healing the bodies. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God, we pray now, Lord, for the victims in these tornado hit areas of our state, Lord. Lord, some of the folks have lost everything and they don't know what to do. I pray to bring relief into these areas. I pray for the families, oh God, who lost their loved ones. Some lost their children. Help, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And then, Lord, the weather people are telling us, oh God, the other storms are on the way Friday. I pray, Lord, that you let these storms dissipate. Let them break up, Lord. Have mercy on the people. All you have to do is speak a word. And the clouds have to go somewhere else. The clouds will have to disappear. Let it be so, Lord. Let it be so, Lord. Your people are crying out to you, Lord, for your help. We're crying out to you, God, for your deliverance. Yes, Lord. Let it be so, Lord. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Look on those families in Nashville that lost loved ones, even children in that school shooting. Touch their minds, Lord, and give comfort, Lord. I pray now, Lord, for the schools that our children are going to. Lord, those from this church who are, who are employees, that you will touch every one of these schools. Lord, let your hand be there. Just be a fence around these schools. Keep our children, Lord. Keep our teachers, Lord. In the name of Jesus. And not just those at school. But Lord, in many 
other places, the public places, stores, oh God. Oh God, even this church, Lord. Put your arms around all of us, Lord. You are our protector. Come us, Lord. Cover your people, oh God. Hide us, Lord, in your bosom. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We look to you, God, in a time of crisis. This is a chaotic time. This is a time we've never seen before. But, Lord, you are my keeper. Yes, you are, Lord. My everything. I depend on you, God. I'm looking toward heaven, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need help, Lord. Help in this city. Help in this Delta region. The people need help, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let this church, Lord, let it be a light. Thank you, Jesus. Let us, oh God, be the light that will show the people. Show them unto you, God. Help us, Lord, in our ministry that we can give hope. Oh God, that we can speak words of life. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, our people need you in the black community, Lord, more than ever. Young men are in trouble, Lord. Help our boys, oh God. Help our young men. Yes, Lord, I pray that you stir us up, Lord, that you stir the church, Lord, that we can do a, a more work, more effective work in our communities, oh God. Yes, Lord, stir, Lord, and let the fire burn on the inside. Hallelujah. Give us a spirit of evangelism. Yes, Lord, let the love be stirred up for our fellow man, Lord. Oh, God. Oh, God. Thank you for saving us. But, Lord, we want to reach out for others. We want to have somebody to come unto you. Stir the church, Lord. The church needs a stirring. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody tell him thank you. Come on, everybody tell him thank you. Oh, we thank you. We thank you now. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you because you're God and there's none like you. Hallelujah. 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 Breathe on us, Lord. Breathe on us. Breathe on me, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Breathe on us, Lord. The Holy Ghost. Let a rain fall in this house, Lord. We need another touch. We need to be refilled. Fill me, Lord. Fill me again. I need a touch, Lord. I need your blessings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we love you. We love your name. We love your way. Hallelujah. 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 God, I thank you. God, I praise you. Oh, Lord, you've been good to me. So good. God, you are wonderful. God, you are worthy. You are worthy, Lord, of all the praises. You are worthy, Lord, of all the glory. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us to come up where we belong. Yes, Lord, that we will turn our attention more on you towards spiritual matters. Help us, God, to be more spiritually minded, to set our affection on things above and not on this earth. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God, I want to do your will. 
I want you to be happy with me. Oh, God, we want to be vessels, vessels of honor, vessels that you can entrust your spirit to reside in. So help me, Lord. Help me to examine myself. I don't want anything there that's not like you. Oh, God. Oh, God. Take away, Lord, the wrong ideals, the wrong thoughts, Lord. Oh, God. Anything that we could have done, Lord, against your word. Take it away, Lord. Yes, Lord. I know God You are a holy God And you require holiness Help me Lord Yes Lord Yes Lord Help the church Lord Help the church Lord That we will be focused Focus on you Lord That we keep our focus On the right things Yes Lord To of us, Lord, have become quite busy with the affairs of this life. Oh, God, help us to come back to where we need to be, Lord. Yes, Lord. Why don't everybody tell him, yes, Lord. Come on, everybody. Lift your hands and tell him, yes, Lord. Hey, hallelujah. Come on and tell him, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way. Have your way in us, Lord. In our souls. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Why don't you tell him, thank you. Thank you. Lord, we thank you. Thank you. I want to thank you, God, for what you already done. Yes, Lord. Many of the things that we've asked you for, Lord, have come to pass. Thank you, Lord, for your healing. Thank you, Lord, for working out our situations. Oh, God. Oh, Lord. Why don't you tell him thank you? Come on, everybody, tell him thank you. We thank you for what you've done. We thank you for deliverance. We thank you for making a way out of no way. Only you, God, could have done the things you've done. And I just thank you. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord. I want to thank you for all you've done. Hallelujah. 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 My soul, my soul love you. My soul, my soul love you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Everybody tell him thank you. Come on, everybody tell him thank you. Out of your soul, tell him thank you. Oh, God, we thank you now. We praise your name. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. In all things. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, everybody stand, if you will. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, stand. Hallelujah. I want you to come around the altar for just a few minutes. Many times the Lord give it to me to lay hands. We're probably not going to be here long. But come on, come on. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Lord, I thank you for the people that are coming down. Oh, God, I pray for individual needs. You know our prayer. Yes, you know all of our situation. Yes, Whether it's at home, yes. our families, and on our job, yes, our family, children, Thank grandchildren. You. Lord, the world sits yes, in your hand. Yes, you see everything, Lord. Yes, Lord. And you are a compassionate yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We believe in prayer. Yes. 
Yes, we do, Lord. We know, Lord, you said your word. Lord, that it was the prayers of the righteous. Hallelujah, that have done it much. Hallelujah, we're crying out to you. My God, my deliverer, my everything. Lord, as I lay hands on the people, and I even the Lord, oh God, I pray that you would touch. I pray that you would deliver. Look on these young people now. Touch our mind, oh God. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Turn it around, Lord. Turn it around, Lord. Yes, Lord. The things, oh God, she's seen and heard. He am a higher. Bless her, God, and touch her. Help her, Lord. For she's in the right place at the right time. But the devil wants to destroy her life. Hallelujah. I pray now, God, that a change would take place in her life. Oh God, in the thought process. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You, Lord. This precious child. Yes, I know you love children. I know you care about them. Yes, I lay hands on the child. Yes, and I believe a change shall happen. Yes, By the devil. He's a liar. He is a liar. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you for my sister. Bless her, God. Meet the needs in her life. Yes, Lord. Let the load be lighter. Yes, Lord. The stress that is here. Hey, glory. I want you to touch, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Let joy spring up like a river. Yes, Lord. You're God and there's nothing you cannot do. Thank you. Everybody tell him thank you. Lord, we're on the altar. And we need your touch. We need your blessings. Oh, God. Bless her, Lord. Touch her tonight, oh God. Give her a greater understanding, Lord, of your will. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And the work that you have for her. In the name of Jesus. Come on, say the name of Jesus. Come on, say the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I lay hands on a God. Your hand, Lord. Your hand, oh God, as I lay hands on her. Oh God, bring about a change and deliver us here. Eat up a higher. Glory. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let her desires be your desires. Oh my God. We're going to wonder here. We're going to wonder here, Lord. Hallelujah. The cry, the cries, the cries that have come from her, Lord. You heard her cries. And Lord, I'm looking to you. I'm looking to you, God, to turn things around. I'm looking to you, Lord, to solve our problems. Yes, Lord, to work on the issues that are before us, oh God. Yes. Eat of a higher. Eat of a higher. Eat of a higher. I speak life. I speak life. I speak life, Lord, for her family, for the children, Lord. Yes! Yes! Yes, yes Lord. Yes, Lord. Touch right now. In the name of Jesus. Lay your hand on this dear Lord, this dear woman, this lady. Oh, God. Oh God, show her, Lord, how great you are. The wonder you are, God. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody tell him thank you. We thank you now. Thank you for this woman. Thank you, Lord, for her faithfulness to church. She loves the church. God, I want you to bless her. And bless her the more. Let her understand your word. Let her understand your will, Lord. Lord, the people have seen a change.
change in her life. Let her be a greater light to her family and to others, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, I thank you. Thank you for this young man. And let the hands on him, God. Let your hands on him now. Oh God, reveal yourself to him. Reveal your, your will, Lord. Your way, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lead and direct, oh God. Help him, Lord. The prayers he's prayed, oh God. Show yourself, Lord. Show yourself strong. Yes, Lord. Oh, we give you the glory. We give you praise. I want to praise you now. And I want to thank you, Lord. I want to thank you in advance. For what you're going to do here, Lord. I want to thank you, Lord, for turning things around in a home. Oh, Lord. Family member, she's, she's no God that she's concerned about. I pray for the miracle. I pray for deliverance. Deliver, Lord. Deliver, Lord. Show her how much you love her. How much you're concerned about her. Oh, Oh Lord, we're looking at you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, let your blessing flow here. In the name of Jesus, touch, oh Lord. Hey, hey, I'm the higher, in the higher. Yes, Lord, let the prayers be answered. Oh God, according to your will. Let a business be blessed. The things she's trying to do, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you for what you already have done. And thank you for what you're going to do, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank, you. thank you for my sister. Bless her, Lord. Touch right now. Touch her mind, Lord. Yes, Lord. Strengthen her, Lord. Find the devil who wants to stop her, Lord. Who wants to stop what you want to do on the inside. God will look into you. Hallelujah. As she cries out tonight. Give her the repression that is needed. Give her the renewal that's needed. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Touch right now. Lay your hand on them, God. I want to thank you for what you're doing in this life. How you have blessed. How you have touched. Lord, bless them more. Oh, God, take them to another level. Let him be a strong brother for the church. Oh, work along from the male side. Lord, there's some things he has have said he wants to do. Let it be so, God. Work in him, Lord. Work through him, God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We look to you, Lord. Let your spirit fall on him, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Touch it now. Touch it now. Touch it now. Yeah. Touch it now, Lord. Yes, Lord. We need your feeling. Hallelujah. Feel with the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Tell him, yes, Lord. Come on, everybody. Tell him, yes, Lord. Hold on to tell him, yes, Lord. Hold on to tell him, yes, Lord. Yes to your way. Yes to your will. Yes, Lord. Glory to your name. Lord, I love you. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. We thank you for what you've done. And I pray now, God, that you meet every need, oh God. Matter of fact, Lord, I just thank you. I thank you for hearing us. Thank you for your hand of deliverance. Your touch right now. Thank you for answering our prayer. Oh God, we're going to continue to praise you and to give you the glory and honor. 
In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Oh, we thank God. We thank God. Hallelujah. We thank God for his goodness. We thank God for what he is doing right now. Amen. Amen. The Lord is so good. The Lord is wonderful. And we're grateful for the blessings of the Lord. All right, we're transitioning into the Bible study portion now. And uh, you have your books. All right. Sister Lee, are we on? Yes, sir. Okay. Mondre, I, I, I see it now. Good, good, good. All right. We're going to go back to uh, the chapter that we wrote last week. We're going to complete it and, and go to a new chapter. Uh, on tonight, but the uh, we're finishing up the dispensation of human government. Dispensation of human government. Now, the author tells us in the end that this dispensation failed to, that is, in meeting uh, the standards of God. All right. We know that the institution of government is yet in existence. And we read scriptures last week to, sh to show that the institution of government is an institution that was ordained of God. Now, we have no perfect governance. Am I right about that? We have no perfect governance. But yet and still, because God has uh, given us a conscious, uh, a conscious to denote right from wrong, then there are certain things even in pagan nations or nations that uh, who would say they're not a Christian nation, there's still a moral aspect where they would call certain things wrong. And therefore, God works through that to provide even for our safety in this world. But human government has failed the expectations of God, if you follow what I'm saying here. Even when you look at Noah, somebody, one of you Bible scholars, he was a failure in this time period. Can anybody tell me how he failed? Would you call him an alcoholic? That was one. He was drinking too much of the <laughs> So he failed God because he got drunk, didn't he? Yeah. He failed God. That, that story is recorded in the Genesis chapter 9. The Bible says he planted a vineyard. The author says that he probably planted that because think about for a whole year, or more, we, we know he was on the ark for a year. He stepped out of the ark. There was no vegetation in really. it. All right, so he did plant the vine, y'all. Probably trying to get some uh, fruit crops to come uh, back to life, maybe. Uh, whether he understood about the process of fermentation, if you take grape juice, and let it sit for a while. Yeah. You know, you you it's you, you, anti some sugar's been added, I think, maybe something else. It will turn into what alcohol. And this is what happened to Noah. So he did get drunk. I won't go so much and say he was alcoholic. <laughs> he did get drunk. And and the shame the thing that happened to him was that when he got drunk. He was laid out in his tent naked. Now, his son, Ham, came in and what, saw his nakedness. And when he saw his nakedness, he goes out to his other two brothers and he makes fun of his father. 
And what did they do? His, his, the other two saw Sham and Jephthah, the Bible said they walked backwards with a, a blanket and they covered their father's nakedness. Now, there is a mystery as to exactly what happened. Because whatever happened when the saw Ham went into that tent, the scriptures do not completely tell us the story. Whatever occurred, uh, it was disrespectful that Ham did. Because when Noah wakes up, he's angry. And he curses, not profanity. All right, not profanity. Uh, but he really pronounces a curse on Ham's son, Canaan. The curse was never put on Ham. I want to go back to that in a minute. Okay. Now, I'm going to tell you what some theologians uh, are speculating. Some say maybe it was some type of homosexual act. The Bible does not say that. You know, we, we, so we can't really say that's what it was, but Saul wanted to say, but well, whatever occurred, it was it was disrespectful. He should have whatever he did. He should not have done so. And apparently, uh, here's another thought from theologian. I can I can agree with this. Apparently, uh, Ham's son Canaan must have participated. In this this disrespectful act, because notice what no one does, he curses Canaan. Y'all follow me? Y'all read this before? Do I need to go to that scripture? It's, it's there. He curses Canaan. Now look at something that the author says on page one hundred six. All right, I tell you what, I, I think I think. Because of what folks have said uh, about this, and and the fact that Ham is the father of the black race, I think that maybe we ought to go read y'all, and, and let's be real clear about this. Um, let's go to Genesis chapter nine, everybody. Genesis chapter 9 in your Bibles. I'm going to read kind of quickly. Genesis chapter 9, verse 22. Genesis 9 and 22. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren of valor. And Sham and Jephthah took a garment, laid it upon both of their shoulders, and went backwards and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward, and they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Curse be Canaan, a servant of servants, shall he be unto his brethren. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem. Now Shem is where the Semitic people come from. And the biggest group that comes from Shem would be the Jews. But those Arab nations also are going to come from the lineage of Shem. And Canaan shall be his servant. Notice it says, and, and Canaan shall be what? His, be his servant. God shall enlarge Jephthah. Jephthah is where your Europeans come from. So uh, that would include the British, Germans, Spaniards, the French, Italians, and all of those individuals. All right, God shall enlarge Jephthah and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. Now, I don't care for the subtopic that the author put here on page 106. The first one says, curse upon Ham, because uh, that really should be cursed upon Canaan. All right? Should be cursed upon Canaan. He did not curse Ham. All right, then look at the next one. Uh, the subtopic after was a Sham, Ham, and Jephthah. His statement here is Ham's descendants were relegated to a road of servitude. I disagree with that statement too. Because if you look at history, you can look at biblical history, you can look at uh, uh, natural history or secular history, and you will find 
that the children of Ham, again being the father of the black race, uh, that they were highly intelligent and became a very powerful people, powerful nation. I'm going to go through a few of them. You see, this is one of the scriptures or passive scriptures that were used against black folks when it came to slavery. Uh, and you know, if, if you can capture a person's mind, you know, if you can get into their mind, you could just about control the individual. In, in sports, athletes will tell you that uh, sometimes uh, the opponent the per, or the team or the person win because they do what? They get you. Uh, you. You look at some of them old uh, videos of, of Muhammad Ali, how he talked about them folk. Talked about their mom and everybody else. <laughs> and then we're telling them that you, you going down in three. You going down, and, and, and sometimes the ground, he said they were going down, that's where they were going. He got in their mind a lot of times. He got in their head. And, and so they used that against black folks to destroy uh, the mental aspect. And, and, and that, that did a lot. And uh, they would use this passage, then they would use a passage over in the New Testament that, that talks about uh, slaves obey your master. That's in the New Testament. Now you have to understand that the slavery that took place in the uh, New Testament, in particular, even in the Old Testament, was not the same type of slavery uh, that happened to black people. You see, we were we were what they call shadow uh, slavery, shadow slavery. I don't think I'm pronouncing that quite right. But if you were born a slave, you're gonna die a slave. If you you know, as black people, if your mother was a slave, then you were a slave for your entire life. And 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 blacks were, you know, you know, from history you know how blacks were treated and degraded. Slavery in the Bible was not, particularly in the New Testament, was not nearly what black folks went through. The only group that may have gotten close would have been uh the Jews on the Pharaoh as a hard taskmaster. But those uh, scriptures you read about slavery or scriptures that may use the word, as a matter of fact, let me tell you all this, in the New Testament, when you look at the word servant in the New Testament, and you go look at the Greek translation, most of the time the Greek translation really was slave or slavery. But it still was not talking about the type of slavery that our ancestors went through, you know, taken from a, uh, a continent and brought to another continent against their will and all the things that had been done. So this going back to Genesis chapter 9, the curse was put on who? It was put on Canaan. All right. Now, let, let's look at the sons. Uh, if you look on page 107, look at the sons of of uh, Ham, Cush, Mizram, uh, Foot, and Canaan. Now look, it gives you the nationality. Cush was Ethiopian. The word Cush really means burnt face. So it was talking about the uh, the darkness of their skin. Black people. Alright. Mizram was Egyptian. Uh, put was the Libyan. You got the country of Libya. And Canaan, well, well would be the Canaanite. Now, the Canaanites, uh, you had several nations that were in Canaan. The Hittites, Hittites, Gergesites, Perizzites. Let me see what other ites is in there, if I, if I can remember <laughs> right now. Jebusites, huh? They did become bad. Okay, so now that was that's from who? Ham. That, that would be from Canaan. 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 Yeah, Canaan. the Canaanites. Okay. okay. Alright. Ham's yeah, yeah, the Ham son was Canaan. Alright. And that would be what the Canaanites, those nations that name. I didn't get all of them, but 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 you know, uh the Lord told uh Moses 
when he was going to bring the children of Israel back into Canaan, he said there were seven, there are seven nations that are mightier than, than you are. And he told, Mo, gave Moses instruction that when you go in there, I want you to utterly destroy all of them. Don't let them live among you. You got to get rid of them. Now, in my mind, part of this prophecy, which was well, the curse that 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 um, Noah put on Canaan, I believe that's more of a prophecy, and it has to do with who the Canaanites would become. Are y'all following what I'm saying? You see, God knows your ending already. Y'all follow me? Yeah. He knows the end already. Now. He does not, even though he knows the end, and this is kind of hard to explain in one sense because our knowledge and our thinking is somewhat limited. We think of a beginning, we think of an end, we think about the fact that here we are, we've been born, and you know we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, what's going to happen next month, next year. God knows all of that, but he does not interfere with your freedom of choice. You are a free moral agent. All right. So does God know the number of people that are going to go to heaven one day? Yes. He knows that. And he knows that without interfering with your choice. So I believe that Noah's curse on Canaan had a lot to do with who the Canaanites were going to become. The reason that he told Moses to destroy these people because they became some of the most wicked people that the, that earth has ever known. And why was that? Now, you, you need to know this too, that Satan is intelligent. He has a certain amount of knowledge. You see, as we get into the next dispensation, which will be the dispensation of promise, in the next chapter, that's what we're going to in a few minutes, hopefully, you find that the promise that God made to Abraham, the Abrahamic covenant, how his seed would be as the sand of the sea and the stars of heaven. And, and the read is called the dispensation of promise when we go there in a few minutes is because the promise that he, he made to Abraham of who? The redeemer that's going to come through him. Now look at this. And you know, and I guess I'm kind of going into another chapter, so I'm going to do this and come back to, to my point. But you know, he sends Abraham from Ur and told him to go to what was Canaan. Now, when Abraham gets there, the Canaanites are already there. Y'all follow me? Not only that, but 430 years later, when Moses brings the children of Israel back to Canaan, the Canaanites have multiplied tremendously and are extremely wicked when Moses comes. Now, here's the point. Don't you know that when God made the promise again and made that covenant with Abraham, that Satan was lurking around and heard the promise, heard the covenant? And Satan has always tried to delay and stop the plan of God. And if, if Satan knows that Abraham's seed is supposed to multiply like the sand of the sea, the stars of the heaven, then I'm going to do some things to try to do what, to try to stop this. So he, he really infiltrate the hearts of the Canaanites uh, to do this. Many of the Canaanites were giants. Many of them were giants. Now we talked about the giants back in what, Genesis 6, right? Before the flood. The, and they were all wiped out. But there is another eruption of giants. We know that because David fought some of them. Not only did David fight some, but, but when the children of Israel went in there, uh, the sons of Anak, uh, uh, Caleb fought the Anakims. They fought these giants. Yes, ask your question. Speak up. I want everybody to hear you on Facebook, too. Okay. So, it was only the, the was Canaan curse. So, yes. what bloodline did Christ come from? Christ.
Christ came from Shem. Wow. Okay. Yes, he came from Shem. All right. And um, you can look where it says R. Well, I know I'm mispronouncing this one, but A R P H A X A D. I think X is right. I pronounced that. He has the Chaldeans, and then you got the Israelites in parentheses. Why does he have the Israelites in parentheses? Is because Abraham was down there with the Chaldeans, called him out of the city of Ur, and starts a new nation. All right, but going back to the back to the the, the, the Canaanites, many of these Canaanites were giants. You take, for example, uh, the city of Jericho. How y'all think the mighty walls were built? Those walls that seem to be uh, where seem to be uh, in uh, seem to be where you could not penetrate them, couldn't get through. Those walls were probably built by giants. The people of Jericho may have been giants, or a large number of them, because a lot of them were there. See, this was all by design by Satan. Notice I said you got another eruption of giants. It, before the flood, Satan thought he would contaminate the bloodline of the human race to keep Jesus from coming in. Now, he comes up with seemingly a different plan after the flood. Let me get these giants multiplied because I know what God has promised Abraham and his descendants. So let me have these folks already there to fight and to do what? To destroy Abraham's seed so the Messiah can't come. Am I making any sense with this? Yes, Think about Goliath. Goliath was with the Philistines. That's in this, this, this same area. Goliath's uh, challenge was send me a man out to fight with me. All right? No need to both armies fight. And he said, if your man win, then all the Philistines will be your servants. If I win, then all of Israel will be our servants. Servants of my slaves. Because what they had, in, what the devil had in mind, that Israel would lose that battle. And Israel would become the slaves of the Philistines. He had his mind of wiping them out. You got to ask another question. Yes, sir. The Ethiopians, the Egyptians, and the Libyans. Yes. Well, <laughs> let me put it this way. They were all pagan nations. Basically, they were pagan. Let me put it that way. But they were black. <laughs> there you go. Listen. And let me go and go, go, go. Well, let me finish another point and come back to this. How wicked were the Canaanites? That many of them were giants, not all of them, but many of them were giants. And then they got into all those fertility uh, practices, worshiping fertility gods and goddesses, which meant that they thought that they had to commit sexual acts to 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 please their gods. And and the Lord knew that if Israel would hang around these folks, they would soon be drawn in, and they were. Because they did not do as God had told them. They were a wicked. I talked about how wicked they were in, in other lessons. They were a wicked group of folks. And so uh, they need to be destroyed. But let's go back to what you were just saying. Uh, Ethiopia uh, was a very wealthy nation. Uh, there's one scripture in the Bible when, when, uh, that indicates they had a million men in their army back then. Okay, think about this. The queen of Sheba was really an Ethiopian. I mean, she was a black woman. Very wealthy. All right, all right. The Egyptians. In history, the Egyptians were some of the smartest folks of ancient history. Intelligent in mathematics and in science and all the other things. Egypt. See, what, what I wanted to, wanted to show you, just as our history books and Hollywood 
have always tried to, in the years past, and even in some cases now, uh, try to downplay play the intelligence of black people because most Hollywood productions, when it comes to Egypt, all the pharaohs, white. Most of the Egyptians, white. They sprinkle a couple of black folks in there. The movie, The Ten Commandments, Pharaoh, white, blue eyed, Charleston Heston. You know, Cleopatra, you go look at her movie, white. These folk were black. These were black people. But Hollywood and the writers and history books took it a different direction. See, the, the kind of racism that we see in today's time and then what was back in Jim Crow days and slavery, that race, that type of racism gets to start really more or less in the 1600s when they were taking advantage of black people um, to, to make money. But prior to that, that type of racism, there was some racism, but it did not, it wasn't that hardcore that you see come with the time of slavery. And let me show you something else too. The Bible. Now you gotta understand that the Bible we have right now, now we, you know, I told you I prefer the King James Version because many of these other translations, like the NIV, I told y'all, you don't even fool the NIV. Because the NIV got over 30,000 words less than King James. Y'all hear that? Over 30,000 words less. That means something missing in, in, in that translation. And some of the other translations, if you take the King James Version and put it side by side, you can see that what's in the King James Version is different from the other one. So I prefer the King James Version. I think it's, it's, it's uh, one of the most accurate Bibles that we have at this time. Now, there's some others that are accurate, but the King James is what I prefer. I, but what I'm trying to tell you is this. Now, let's look at the King James Version. And I believe God had something to do with preserving it and making it where, 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 where it became. But the King James Version, uh, men over the years have twisted some things in their teaching, even from the King James Version, to make it seem like all these characters in the Bible were white. But most of them were not. The majority of them were not. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes, All right. Look, look at something here. Okay. Page 107 has got the chart here. But let's look at something here. Go to Genesis chapter 10. Go to Genesis chapter 10. Verse 1 said, Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Jephthah. And unto them were sons born after the flood. So he had his three sons in that, that, verse, that first verse. Now, verse 2 through 5 talks about the sons of Jephthah. That's where the European, more white people come from. People that eventually are going to migrate into Europe and the Caucasian mountains and some of Asia. All right? Because really, uh, you know, they're called, white people call called Caucasians that come from the Caucasian mountains uh, that are really on the edge of Europe. All right, now look at verse 6. Notice the verse, from verse 6, with well, verse 6, and the sons of Ham. So it gives his four sons, and then from those four sons, you have, you have their sons. This is where your black lineage come from. You got from verse 6 all the way to verse 20. Then you have the last part, Sham sons. Uh, that would be, again, your uh, Jewish people and many of the uh, Arab nations of the Middle East. You go from verse 21 to verse 31. Now, who has the shortest number of verses in that chapter? The, the, the Marcador, the Car Carcass. All right. That's true. The sons of who? The sons of Jephthah. 
got the shortest lineage. But, but so if, if black people were not important, if black people did not play a role in the scriptures, if you follow what I'm saying here, then why is it that they got the lowest genealogy record in this chapter we call the Table of Nations? There's 70 nations that are in this chapter. 70 nations. This is the beginning of repopulating the earth after the flood. Am I making any sense here? Now, Abraham, who was the father of the Jews, if you go back to the book that he has in here, look, the uh, Chaldeans, and then you have this settlement in Persia. I kind of somewhat disagree with that a little bit. The Chaldeans really are the same, or they're going to be intermingled with the Babylonians. If you go to, if you look over in, uh, well, that's in, yeah, that's in Genesis 10 also. Go to verse 10. Uh, well, verse 9, well, well, verse 8, and Cush begat Nimrod, because we talked about him last week. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord, wherefore it is said that even Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord, you know, he built the Tower of Babel. And the beginning of his kingdom was what? Babel. That's where the Chaldeans live, you all. In Babel. Babylon is, is the city, but the nation becomes Babylon. All right? You know, uh, area was in Mesopotamia. That area eventually becomes Babylon. Nimrod, who came from Ham, well, came from Cush. Okay? Uh, Cush was Ethiopia. Ethiopia was on both sides of the Red Sea. I'm visualizing my map, my mind rather. Uh, you, you got the Persian Gulf, you got the Red Sea. So not the Red Sea, but the Persian Gulf. That's what separates uh, when you go down in Africa from the Middle East. Cause see the Middle East, listen, for many, listen to this, for many, many years, the Middle East was considered as a part of Africa. But later on, when they started drawing up all these maps and through racism, they decided, oh, no, we can't put them over here with Africa. We need to make a part of Asia. Y'all follow me? But many, many years ago, it was considered part of Africa. Nimrod is beginning to babble. On. Nimrod is a black man. And so there's speculation. Abraham was not white. Y'all hear what I'm saying? He was not white. Abraham could have very well been brown skinned or a darker skinned individual. Uh, the late uh, Reverend E.D. Hill, he was a well known preacher some years ago. He said, somebody asked him, said, what color is Jesus? He said, I don't know, he said, but I do know that when he was born, he was born in a land of brown people. And he had to flee to a land of black people. You know, when Joseph took him over, Joseph took him over into Africa. Because he took him over to Egypt, what the scripture said. And so he came back over there within a brown land. And he said, and he was gone back to heaven before the first white person ever got saved. He said, I don't know what color. He said, don't make me any different. Billy Graham. If you, you can Google him. He's on, he's on uh, uh, you know, online, and he was preaching, and he, he said that he, he, he was preaching to a big audience. He said, our black brothers out there, I want y'all to know Jesus was not a white man like me. He was not a white man like me. Yeah, he said he probably was a brown skinned man. He said maybe not as dark 
as some of you, as black people, he was not white, he was at least brown skinned. See, theologians, even in their teaching in these seminaries, either, well, some, some of them that first started teaching, they, some of them were racist. And in their racist ideology, as they began to teach in these seminaries, other people who were taught, uh, they taught, they would go out and teach others, not knowing that what they taught was not really correct. Mm -hmm. It's at the end, of course, black preachers went to white seminaries, didn't really do the research on their own. But you have more people not doing the research to show that many of these people, many of these characters that you read about in the Old Testament probably were black. That dispels the theory that the black race was cursed. We are not cursed in this sense. Now you can be suffering from the curse of sin and you do some things to yourself. I think one of our biggest problems is is that, well, I'm going to say, say this, slavery, and, and people try to say, oh, don't go back and talk about slavery because that, that end is so long ago and, and, and uh, you know, you don't need to bother about that and all that kind of stuff. Slavery has done more damage than it is for black people in America. It's done more damage to us than what we realize. Go on from generation to generation. Put us behind. Slavery also did damage to Africa. Because they, they stole from Africa the brightest and best of people. We don't know what Africa would have been in today's time if slavery had not taken place. Y'all follow what I'm saying here? Yeah. Now, on the other hand, all this foolishness today uh, about uh, that somebody owe us something, owe us money, talking about reparations. We don't need no reparation. No man. They promise you 40 acres of the mule. Now, do you want 40 acres of the mule? I sure don't. What am I going to do with 40 acres? I'm not a farmer. I love having 40 acres, but I mean, you can keep it. need just the flower. But But see, but see what I'm saying about what, what I'm trying to say about the, about the reparations, mm -hmm. it is senseless. Because how you, how you going to calculate enough money for uh, approximately 35 million folks? You can't calculate that. The United States already in debt. How you going to pay for that? It doesn't make sense. So what we have to do as black America and even through the church, We've got to encourage our children that are in school to get an education, teach them to be what? To be hard workers and do what is right. That's what we have to teach them. And certainly pray for them. Am I right about that? Not going with that in a different direction, but I won't. So, so I, I wanted to go through that. I think every now and then we need to teach this because we need to have understanding about what's going on here in, in, in the Bible as such. Okay, the dispensation of human government, it ends. So I'm going to end. It ends, again, it, it uh, doesn't end well because uh, human government didn't come up to God's expectations. He even fell, in a sense, with Noah. Now, Noah did wrong, but you know, God would say later on, he named three people. Uh, I'm trying to think who the third one was. But there were three people in one particular scripture. Noah was one. Daniel was another. He, he really named them as being good folks and nobody else was like them. He, so Noah made a mistake. Yeah, he made a mistake, but he did get things right with God because God would commend him way beyond his time of death. Go to page uh, 117, the disposition of promise. So we'll at least get started with this. I've already started one. Started. Uh, this somewhat anyway, but listen, when 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 gov when this when the dispensation of human government failed, and these nations developed, and, and these people were a wicked uh, group of people because they were, uh, 
you really don't find many righteous people. You, you before the flood, you you, you see uh, Cain, you see uh, Enoch, uh, who was translated taken to heaven. You see Noah. Uh, some of them think Sham was, was good, but the scripture don't indicate that. But you don't have any righteous people. All right, that could be some other the Bible that talk about. It. But that they could that, 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 that could not have been meant it because God decided, okay, since the disposition of human government failed, I'm gonna pick out a, a man. I'm gonna pick out a man. Alright. And I'm gonna pick the, I'm gonna deal with this man to start a nation. A nation of people that are gonna be my people. And I'm gonna work through this nation. Not only would were Abraham seed, not only was that nation to bring in the Messiah. But they were to be a holy nation. They were to be a nation that was shown the righteousness of God to the entire world. Matter of fact, uh, church, what we are doing right now as a church to win folks to Christ, to win folks to the kingdom of God, that's what the Jewish people were supposed to be doing. They were supposed to be a nation of preachers and evangelists. But they failed God as a nation. They failed. And that's why God turned to the Gentiles. And, and this is when Paul eventually goes to the Gentiles. And where does Paul end up going more or less? Guess who he started preaching to? He started preaching to more white people. <laughs> he did. The Romans were white. That's a book in the Bible. All right. Some of those other epistles were basically. But the gospel began to travel up north, going into Europe and Asia. That's what the gospel, that's what people were at work, beginning to accept the gospel. Board. Now, does that say that others did not? Now, there were some, there's some indication in history that there were black people down in Africa who also accepted the gospel. But the Bible goes on and shows what Paul did. Okay? Now, you, you look at in your book at the bottom of the page, and this is where the Abrianic covenant begins. Genesis 12, Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 through 3. Now the Lord has said unto Abram, you know, he was called Abram at first, later on he changed his name to Abraham, get thee out of thy country, that would be from the city of Ur, down to the Chaldeans, and from thy kindred, so you leave your kin, folks, and from your father's house, lead, lead them to, unto a land I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. That's the Abrahamic covenant, that if he would lead, and he would do what God tells him to do, he would make a great nation out of it, and he would be blessed. And he, and he told him, he said, now those that bless you, I'm going to bless them. Those that curse you, I'm going to curse them. But that promise it is not only to Abraham, but it's to his seed. Because this promise is going to be repeated to Abraham's son and grandson. And so that would even carry on even today. Uh, and this is why it's so vital and necessary for us as a church to understand that even today we are to pray for Israel. And we can even, even lend financial support because that's where your blessings are going to come from. It's one of the areas you are blessed. Listen, folks. The one, one of the, I, I, you all heard me teach this many years before. One of the reasons the United States has become such a blessed nation with two principles. This nation was basically a Christian nation, all right, from its roots. But beginning in the 1940s, we started helping Israel. When no other nation in the world would do this. We were the first one to recognize Israel as a nation, firm supporter of Israel. And look at what God did. The United States went to the top. See, when World War II broke out, we were not the top nation. 
is at the end of the war or after the war, we became the leader in the world. And primarily because of Christian ethics and because of our support to the nation of Israel. Great Britain, which one time said the sun never sets on, on the, the lands of Great Britain because Great Britain had property all over the world. Now Great Britain is reduced to one and a half hours. Yes. And you know why? They turned it back on Israel. Because in World War II, when Jews were trying to escape from all this stuff that Hitler did, tried to go to uh, Great Britain, they refused. Turned them around. Sending them back over there. And it is other things that were against Great Britain. God's word is true. Every nation that has gone against Great Britain has failed. Every, don't y'all think it's something that this tiny nation today, which has 12 million people, only out of the 12 million, only 7 million of them are Jews. This tiny nation is one of the most powerful nations in the world. One, listen, they have more millionaires percentage-wise in the nation of Israel than any nation in the world. Some of the scientific discoveries, some of the medical advancements, some of y'all might think that all oh, this is the United States. No, I'm not. The United States be a lot of times watching the medical field over in Israel. They come up with all kinds of things. They are blessed and don't Full to understand why they're so blessed. It's in the word of God. Alright? Now, this dispensation of promise. You go to page 118. He talks about these promises. And you can read them on your own. We, we, we read it in the scripture. Most of y'all should be familiar with the call of Abraham. Uh, he chose. You look at uh, one statement. He chose God is. That is. He chose to separate unto himself one family. He's going to work with this one family. And if you look at some of the scriptures, uh, let me see where those scriptures are. I wrote it down somewhere. Yeah. Go to Genesis chapter 13, everybody. I want you to look at it. We're going to kind of end it here. I, I, I really intend to get more into this disposition that I got. I, I started talking about uh, where black people came from. And I still think that's important. Genesis chapter 13. Go to verse 14. And the Lord said unto Abram. After the lot was separated from him. Lift up now thy eyes. Look from the place where thou, where thou art. Northward and southward. And eastward and westward. For all the land which thou seest to thee. Will I give it. And to thy seed. How long? Forever. Forever. This promise was what? Yes, she decided that to continue to listen. This promise was what? How long was forever? No end. No end. <laughs> There's no end. God repeats this. Let me see if this is where I want to go. Go to Genesis chapter 15 now, verse 18. Uh, well, no, that's not the one. Let me see if it's in 17. Now come back. What did I say? I said 15, 15 and 18. Well, let me read that because you still, still need to do it. In verse in 15 and 18. And the same that the Lord God made come with Abraham saying, Unto thy sea have I given this land from the river of Egypt. That would be, he's talking about the, uh, the Nile River in Egypt. So guess what? A, a, a great part of Egypt, even today, is in the, is it is in the land that God promised Israel. Uh, from the river of Israel to the great river, the river Euphrates. The river Euphrates is over there. You have to go all the way back into the Middle East, eastward to uh, Iran. No, I'm sorry, Iraq. Iraq. The Kenites, the Ken, the Kenites, the Kenizzites, and the Kadamites, and the Hittites, all these people in, the, in Canaan, and the Perizzites, and the Raytheans, Raytheans is another word for giants, and the Amorites, 
and the Canaanites and the Gergesites and the Jebusites. Israel has never had all the land God promised them. Because if they had done what God told them in the book of Judges and had lived right, then Israel would have had all of, of the Middle East practice. So, all this land, listen, all this land, Israel, leave my folks alone. Jordan, gone. The country of Jordan today, Syria, a great part of Saudi Arabia, uh, Iraq, that was a dumb saying. If you, if you look at the map, that's a huge territory. All, that, all of that's supposed to be Israel. And guess what? They're going to get it. Why? Because he promised them this for what? Forever. Forever. In the millennial kingdom, when Jesus rules from Jerusalem, all that land that these other folks got, Israel's going to get. Because the Abrahamic covenant is everlasting. It's a promise. And God promised us the land forever. This is why the devil is fighting Israel, now Israel today, for the most part, they don't believe in Jesus. Hmm. They said they said the Messiah never came. They said Jesus lied. Yeah. That's when they, they, that's when they crucified, and the Jews today don't believe in him as the Messiah. And and and, and so uh you know they got some things. As a matter of fact, let me, let me, let me uh your brother showed us something other day. And then my wife saw a video. There are two or three members of the the uh, the Israeli uh, legislature. They're trying to get the legislature, the Knesset, I think that's what they call that group, trying to get them to pass a law to make it illegal for you to evangelize in Israel. That they, they're saying that the preacher can't preach about Jesus, can't even mention his name publicly. They're trying to get that law passed right now. Yeah. That's how anti Jesus they are as a nation. Okay, but in the end, it's Jesus who's gonna come save them at the battle of Armageddon and the book of Zechariah when he saved them. He gonna hold his hands out and they're gonna say, where did those holes come from? And he gonna tell them, I got him in your father's house. The nail prints are still in his hand as proof to the future Jew. I'm the one that y'all crucified, your, your, your ancestors crucified. That's something. That is something else. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop. It's almost seven o'clock to praise. Uh, this praise team get me to do a um, practice. These young people get me to do a practice. So if you all are wondering, uh, you know, I like to talk about prophecy. I like to talk about the end time. If you look at what I just did there, you can see the connection from Genesis, Abraham, to the time of the New Testament, Jesus, all the way to the book of Revelation. It all connects. And when you understand the book of Revelation and prophecy, it starts making sense and helps you to understand what's going on in the book of Genesis, actually. So if you all will continue to read in this chapter, I just kind of got to start, but we're going to get deeper uh, into this chapter. This chapter is very important well, now. Abraham's uh, genealogical line is of great importance. And it's good to read and understand and you look at it, you, you see some things um, there that might help explain some things even now. All right. And then I did a lot of talk tonight. That next week, y'all read because I want to hear y'all talk. <laughs> I need that y'all have to talk a little bit more. I want, I want y'all to talk a little bit more. All right. Thank you for being here. Look, let me say this. I'm pleased to see the Bible studies grow. Let's stick with this, y'all. Y'all keep coming. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I'm teaching, but, but, but I prepare to teach, and guess what? As I prepare, I learn something new. I'm still learning. 
I want y'all to come so you can continue. Yeah, right. Can I say something? Yes. Go ahead. I was watching Daystar yesterday evening. They was talking about some kind of medical thing that they What, what, what you probably heard is um, you have an organization called World Health Organization. Yeah, that's it. Donald Trump went against them, which was probably the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. We put a lot of, you know, we were giving them a lot of money. But see, there's, there's a lot of unknown even about the pandemic, even about uh, COVID-19, because that organization seemingly was trying to help cover up whatever has happened over in China. More details are starting to come out now. That's why he, that's why Trump separated from Biden going back. Now what they're talking about is this. Some of the experts are saying that if he signed it, throw that door for me, oh, they come out. Saying that if he signed this legislation, this bill, that it would give the World Health Organization oversight of our medical industry. Right. Um, yeah, our rights. So in other words, it could lead up to one day that if who, that's World Health Organization, if they say you're going to have to take this vaccine, then the United States, by treaty, would have to enforce it and make you take it. That's what some of the people are afraid of. Yeah. yeah, this is what now do I think that's gonna happen right now? I don't I could be wrong. I don't think it'll happen right now. But what I do see is that it's going in that direction. Because you gotta understand all of this is being set up for the enterprise mm -hmm. to eventually lead up to the mark of the beast one day. Now just because a person puts a chip in. That don't mean you got the mark of the beast. Right. And just because a person took the vaccine, because some preachers go around and say, oh, don't take the vaccine, because that's the mark of the beast. No, that's, that's not the mark of the beast. Because if you read carefully, uh, you want to know you took the mark of the beast, because you're going to have to accept it. So they can't slip it in. So the chip is set right now is not going to be. But the technology is what? Leading to the end, I told y'all Sunday, these folks are meeting at least once a year, sometime more than that, over in Switzerland every year, make them plans for the entire world. And in order for that to happen, that means not only Sister uh, Jameson will, it, will the United States have to give up some of their rights when it comes to uh, medicine and that arena, but we will end up giving our rights up in some other instances as well. Uh, for example, most men in European countries have already, many years ago, accepted same-sex marriage. See, they're trying to really push that in America and other countries because some of the African countries say, oh, no, we, we, we ain't going to know that foolishness. Yeah, over there in Africa. I've been quiet. Yeah, because see, 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 all of that's a part of the scheme of trying to bring all this together. It's a one world government. Yeah. Well, I'm going to say this. They're going to make an attempt, but they're never going to be successful. See, now the common thought is that the Antichrist is going to rule the entire world. He's never going to rule the whole world. He's going to make a valid attempt. You see, even in the end, when the battle of Armageddon takes place and, and the Lord Jesus comes to destroy him, he's, that's one of the battles to take over the entire world. Okay? But he won't achieve it. And that's why even after the battle of Armageddon in St. Matthew chapter 25, when there's a separation of the goats from the sheep, people used to teach that was the separation of the saints from the saints. No, it's not. You look at scripture very carefully. It talks about nations. The goat nations represent the nations 
that threw their lot in and supported the Antichrist. All right, sheep nations, that doesn't mean that they necessarily were saved, but they wouldn't go along with the Antichrist, and some of them actually helped Israel. And so they were considered sheep nations. Guess what's going to happen to all the goat nations? All the goat nations are going to be judged right then, and they're going to the lake of fire right then. Did y'all hear what I said? The Bible talks about uh, uh, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations that forget God. That's a, that really has a reference to the end time as well. Because some nations are going to be turned into hell, the lake of fire, which is eternal hell, uh, when there's a judgment of nations. So that, that's another indication that all that he would never get control of the entire world. He's going to make an attempt. Now, I know some theologians, they try to show he's going to rule the whole world. That's not going to happen. Now, would he have an effect on the whole world? Yeah. He's going to have more effect and arm twist than the United States. Because the United States, like you just talked about, what they were trying to do is African nations, they like to twist folks' arms to try to make you do what, you know, what they want them to do. You know, with money and so forth. Antichrist is going to be more powerful than the United States. But he's not going to have the whole world. All right. You all are giving your offering. We're standing. Sunday is the Lord's day. Y'all come to Sunday school. We won't even be dealing if I remember what prophecy in that lesson. Got a whole new lesson coming. And uh, don't forget Sunday evening. I really want y'all to go to the district fellowship meeting. We're trying to encourage the fellowship in District 3. Get to know our brothers and sisters. It's right here in Greenville on Colorado Street. Uh, Grace UMC Church. That's where Pastor Foster is currently worshiping down. So they're going to be the host church. That'll be 5 o'clock on Sunday evening. All right, Lord, we thank you. We give you praise and glory, the honor. Thank you for Bible study. Thank you for the offering that has been received. I pray, the Lord, that you will take us home safe and sound this evening. In Jesus' name, amen.